Hey guys, it's KVO, the Hopeful Artist, and I wanted to do a video with these new watercolors that I received in the mail last week. I put them on my bookshelf, and when I took them out, they completely fell to the side, so I had to rearrange everything. Luckily, the numbers are on the back along with the color in English. So I kind of laid them out like mahjong tiles here, it kind of made me think of that, put them in their proper place. Because I definitely want them to be, you know, match the, uh, the number where they're supposed to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and swatch these in a minute in my watercolor sketchbook and do a nice little painting for you guys. So I decided to take the sketchbook and do this very properly. I'd seen another artist do this um, and I, I thought it was really such a great idea. This is the first page of the sketchbook and these are the, I'm sure I'm going to uh, butcher this, the Kuretake, I'm, I'm just reading it as I, Gansei <laughs> Tambi watercolors. I'd seen them on another video with another artist, so of course I had to get them because I thought they were really nice. And I took this template of circles and just drew two for each color. I wanted to do uh, a light version and then a darker, like a transparent uh, with lots of water, and then next to it do the color with less water and more opaque. So here I am checking off the colors as I'm doing the circles, and of course I wanted to go in and label these with the correlating color and number. This took me about half an hour to do, so it really wasn't too bad, and it was actually very relaxing, so I'm glad that I did it, and now I will have this color swatch to look at. It's really important to swatch your materials on the paper you will be using, if possible, because then you really see how the color and the medium reacts to that particular paper, and this is watercolor paper, so it's a thicker paper with some texture to it to soak up some of the water, and it really didn't bend or buckle at all. I mean, it was it's really nice paper. Um, I think I got this sketchbook from, from Dick Blix, I think. Um, I just can't remember. I bought it a while ago. So I'm just setting up my templates here, and then I'm going to go through it and sort everything out accordingly. And as you can see, like I said, I did, I'm in my bathrobe, by the way, I did this early one morning. <laughs> so I love my cozy bathroom. It's actually chilly here some mornings in South Florida. So I did a more transparent version with a lot of water of each color. And then next to it, I did a more opaque version with a lot less water. And I use these new brushes. So I linked the paints and the brushes I'm using in this video. If you want to get them on Amazon, they're really fantastic and, and not too expensive. I was really happy this set had a lot of great reds because I love red and it really has a great variety of reds and, and different shades of that pink and oranges. It's really a nice color palette. I, I feel like it's really well thought out and I'm so excited to use these paints. Well, I'm going to use them in a minute, but to continue to use them and the colors were very vibrant they went on the paper very nicely. I mean, I highly recommend these. They're really fantastic. I don't know too much about watercolors. I know people that use them professionally usually use them out of a tube. At least that's what I understand. But there are some palette watercolors that are very nice. And I thought these were absolutely fantastic. And when I used them to do my painting in a minute, I, I really enjoyed using them a lot, had no complaints. I mean, look at these beautiful colors beautiful greens, lots of yellows, a really good variety of all the really basic colors you would need and uh, has some nice browns, some pastels, and it even has some colors for skin tone. So to me, this was a really, really thoughtful color palette put together by this company. I highly recommend these if you are into watercolors or want to try watercolors. I was just checking here to make sure I have the right correlating number 
with my uh, little template that I made here. I wanted to make sure I didn't mess that up because if I messed that up, because some of the colors kind of look a little similar on the palette, and I thought if I mess this up, I'm gonna have to start all over and I'll be very aggravated. So I just double checked sometimes. I love these blues. I mean, that's my favorite color is blue and they have some beautiful turquoise and it goes nicely from the green to the blue. Turquoise blues into deeper blues, indigo. I mean, just Prussian is probably one of my favorite blues. And it's just fantastic. And even a couple nice uh, grays too in this palette. It's 48 colors. And I really, I just can't say enough good things about it. And of course I had to let each page dry, which took about, I gave it about 30 minutes before I moved on to the next page. They don't take that long to dry not too bad I'd say you know good 30 minutes so I just kind of went and uh, actually this video took me two days to create the footage so I did some of the I did the swatching I think one day and then the painting the next I think but I did let the pages dry a good 30 minutes between turning it over and I think the pinks and purples are beautiful and again, some nice skin tone colors. I haven't used these yet to do a portrait or anything. I just got these, uh, but I, I am gonna try that soon. And of course, every paint set has to come with yellow ochre. I mean, that's just to be expected, right? And burnt sienna. I mean, you have some standard colors that you see in a lot of paint sets that are used. Standard would be like yellow ochre, cadmium red, Sometimes burnt sienna, the raw umber, a lot of the browns are pretty standard. But the Indian red was different, the maroon, which is nice if you want to do, you know, like structures with bricks or something. A lot of people do urban sketching with watercolors. And I watch a lot of those YouTubers and that would be a great color to do brick work. It can be a little tedious, but definitely comes out looking nice. And again, we have, I mean, look at how dark that black is. Very nice and opaque. We have some grays. And the white, of course, you really can't see here, but then there's like a white gold. And then a bluish gold, which I've never heard of, but it does have a little bit of a blue hue when you look at it. Of course, it's gonna look a little more different in person than on the video. And I decided to paint a whale because, I don't know, I like to paint ocean creatures because I live near the ocean. And I seen some uh, illustrations on Pinterest. I was kind of scrolling through looking for something and I was really wanting to do something with blues because that's my favorite color. So I thought, you know what, let me do this cute little whale. And I really like this sketch pad. It's not too big, it's not too small. And it's a nice size. You can carry it around with you and do nice little pieces. I'm really learning as an artist to work smaller Right now, I find that easier for me because I'm really just learning so many things. I have a lot of basic skills, but I've really just gotten back into art and painting in the last year. I used to do it a lot more often and then I took a long break. Life kind of happened and now I'm getting back into it and I'm very rusty on things. So I'm really relearning and, and doing new things and using new mediums. So it's really exciting and fun. And I'm learning to work smaller. So I'm not so intimidated by the paper or the canvas or whatever I'm using. And I find that works for me. I just prefer kind of the smaller size sketchbooks. I have larger sketchbooks and it can be very intimidating for me. Like I have to fill this whole page. And I watch a lot of sketchbook tours. I love them. And I see artists that just fill the whole page and they're amazing. And I hope to get to that place. And even though they might draw or paint different things, it all seems to just work and be so amazing and, and cohesive. I decided also I was not going to do any outline or anything in black. That is like something I always do. 
and it's kind of, I don't mind outlining things in black at all, but I really wanted to do something different here and go outside of my comfort zone. So I took my white pen and I'm going to outline things in white, which I really like with the ocean theme, doing the white little fish. It, it was a lot of fun. And now I thought with the blowhole, instead of just having water come out, I would do the little, do it in little white hearts, which I just thought was kind of sweet. Some people might find that annoying, but I, I, I like little hearts and I thought it was really kind of cute. Now this is something a lot of people do, which I don't usually do, is I took watercolor, I mean um, colored pencils, excuse me, and went over the watercolor. And I really like that look. It's really good for shading. Since the paper's kind of textured and the, with the colored pencils, you can really see that texture close up and I really think it's a great technique. I'm definitely going to use it more often. Those were my Holbein pencils, by the way, which are fantastic pencils. So I'm pretty much done here, just doing some final things and I'm going to sign it. And I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I am the Hopeful Artist. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And have a really good day, and thank you so, so much.